All right, let's take, okay. Let's take a few different uh, colored things here. Oh, this was something as well that uh, you may not have, uh, may not have seen. Uh, if you do this, uh, there's actually a button on here. Uh, it's this thing here. And when you go, you go plus or minus, you can actually choose how many sides you want on it, which is kind of a cool thing. Uh, we'll go for a hexagon. Uh, let's not have this uh, pointless uh, thing there. We'll do a different color. And uh, we'll change the fill to red. That's always nice, orange and red, isn't it? All right, so what I was thinking, like, the important thing is to, like, let's, I just want to go through, like, a few things here. So we've got these two distinct shapes here. We can group them together, right? So essentially, when you group them together, it's like I don't think you can you can send an interesting. So the fill will change like according to which ones you've got grouped together. Yeah. Okay. Um, but then when you double click on it, this is isolation mode, right? So if I right click, uh, then I've got exit isolation mode. So we're in isolation mode at the moment. And that's telling you this, and you can also exit by pressing escape. Exits isolation mode, and is there another way to do it? So I just wanted to see, like, if you click on this, we've got group. This is just ellipse, right? So the the quick actions uh, menu is different. So I'm just thinking, like, how do you make a curved line? I guess you use. I think the best way to make a curved line is with the pen tool, curvature tool. That might be a good one. <laughs> that sounds good, doesn't it? Oh, this is pretty useful, actually. All right, so what about, like, the eraser tool? We've got the scissors tool here. Scissors, is, it seems cool, right? I can do... Th Please use the scissors tool on the second anchor point, not on an end point of a path. Okay, I think I actually have managed to do it. So what this means is we should have various different sections of this path, right? So wait a minute. So if I then made this... Yeah, you see, that this is more interesting now, right? I'm able to get like a more like more dynamic looking path. Now can't I also use this thing, the rotate tool? So if I wanted to rotate I think I think you need an uh, item select. Say we've got this selected, right? And we go to the rotate tool. And then we say we want to rotate around say this point. Uh, can I then, yes, you see, and you can see that, you can't see that well, but we're actually rotating around the the center there. So I could, you know, if I wanted to position it in like a certain way, um, you know, say I wanted for whatever reason to do it like that, I did selection tool, select, so we'd select this object, right? Say we want to put it here, we want this to go downwards, and we want it to be that angle. Obviously, you could do that, but you could also do um, yeah, you probably would just do that in that situation, but it's like, but yeah, but anyway, that's what the rotate tool does. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on the path, it's just showing me the path, okay. And then we bring in the circle all the way, right? Now, 
I'm just thinking like, could I use the rotate tool in this way? Like we, if we chose the center point here, didn't get it. Huh. I wonder if that would have actually worked. Maybe it's not a complete square. It kind of does work though, right? Is all right. So this is going to be something about alignment now. So let's get the alignment panel, and we'll put that in here. So there's actually like a million different ways to align. You've got align to selection, align to key object, and align to artboard. The easiest one to understand is basically align to artboard, right? So if I click this. You can see if I wanted it to be on the top left. Uh, for some reason, it doesn't actually do it on the top left. No, there we go. It did. Right, right, right. It's the size of the box, right? That's the problem. All right. So this is aligned to artboard, right? Uh, let's make sure we've got our, our little our shapes here. Uh, if you wanted, by the way, if you wanted, like, because the thing is that images is kind of, it's hard not to select the box without selecting the images. So you can just do it like that. It's a bit easier. Uh, and then we can press uh, group, which should be at the bottom here. Okay, so we've got that thing, right? Okay, so as I was saying, right, let's just remove this, just to try not to. So you can see that there's three different align options. And currently, we've got a line to artboard. So if we go for the top, we go for the bottom. Um, but, okay, so say we select those two as well. Vertical line top. We're going to go to, uh, now we're going to try a line to key object. So what we're going to do is we can select our key object. All right, so here we've got our key object there, right? So we're going to select these three objects. And then you can see when we've pressed it again, this thing now, this this graphic has now become the key object. And you can see it's selected. So now if I do say the bottom, right? You can see they actually get aligned to the uh to the bottom there. So you can see they actually get aligned to the bottom of where the key object is. So it's not it's not and it's no longer aligning to the actual stage or the artboard. I always call the artboard the stage because I'm just used to doing it. Let's go back to this buttercup as well. I don't think I did it this did a very good job with this thing. Because um, I chose black and white. But that was really only because I'd seen it on the tutorial. And I think that was actually not the one to choose. Um, can I make my stage bigger? And oh yeah, I don't think I showed that either. If you want to make your stage bigger, your uh, this thing bigger. The edit the artboards. So say I wanted to make A3. Is that really A3? Maybe A2. Custom portrait. Fit to artwork bounds. There we go. Uh, I was actually looking for that. Anything else? Press Alt and drag cursor. Alt. All right, so you can see I have got a second artboard now. So there are some things we can do with this, which I didn't. I, I didn't really do it before. Wouldn't low fidelity. Let's see what it looks much better though, like much better. And this is the thing, like if you had like an image like this, I bet this would look much better when I you make it black and white, because it's already done the, quite a lot of the, the tough work. Wow, the pathing looks really weird as well. But I can certainly select things are like a lot. This is like how you would want to select things, right? This is this is how I remember it, to be honest. In 
I wonder if I did the high fidelity photo option, if that would work even better. It probably wouldn't. I think low fidelity photo is kind of what you want for an image like this. Uh, the actual high quality of the image is not necessarily uh, working. I mean, that looks pretty good, right? Let's copy that and see if, see what happens if we just do a paste of it. And we've got quite a lot of it. Quite a lot. So it's kind of like an interesting way to get like... Uh, so that method definitely works. Um, but yeah, we're going to be keeping on looking at like uh, a lot of this stuff. And you know, just, just going to keep on looking at more and more stuff. So until next time, thanks for watching.